Today's episode of the BRO Reloading Bench is brought to you in part by Marty's Arms, Buckshot Molds, Lee Precision, Ballistic Products, and Kicks Chokes. Get on target with Kicks Chokes. Well, hey there, folks, and welcome to another episode of the BRO Reloading Bench. Folks, if you've watched this channel long enough, you know one of the most satisfying things that I do around here on this channel. This is Brent Cole's Browning A5. It's the newer model A5. I had never held one before. These are some nice, very expensive shotguns. And when you have the term very expensive next to it, you're not going to see it here around, uh, around me personally too much. But this is a fine weapon, 28 inch barrel, and uh, typical, that typical Browning, that awesome humpback profile that you see with all Browning shotguns going all the way back to the old A5, like Captain Buster started with back in the 60s. But I get a chance to take a shotgun like this, and we play around with some choke sizes, we play around with some of my tried and true reloaded buckshot to see what we can do to make this one heck of a deer taking machine and Brent said he was done with the number four thing he the number four buck thing the factory 41 pellet number four buck he, he was afraid it cost him a couple of deer last year so uh, we're gonna take this I mean this is raw I haven't rehearsed anything guys and I'm gonna bring y'all along as we look for loads that are gonna work very very well out of this shotgun at extended ranges. Y'all stand by. Okay folks, um, when we're doing stuff like this, this is not load development. This is tried and true stuff that I have uh, tried some um, that I have tried for years that works outstanding out of our firearms and but Brent had never fired any of this stuff out of his A5 and uh, what he told me he said I'm over it he said I want he said I'm not like Captain Buster he said I don't want a little room for error or whatever else I want these patterns as tight as you can get them between 50 and 60 yards and that's where we test them for extended range purposes and to see how these patterns are holding together between 50 and 60 yards is a good medium to use to, uh, to check these rounds to make sure that they're holding together decent for us between 50 and 60 yards because most folks are going to consider that an extended range fire um, an extended range shot anyway but we have taken deer way out beyond a hundred yards with these loads as well so he wanted as big a pellet as we could get to perform very well at those distances and beyond so that's what we're testing today I spoke to Mr. Bill Kawas last week. As a matter of fact, I, um, I got him to uh, to send me some hulls too because I was running low. And he, right now he's still got plenty, but he said at the rate it's going, he may run out for the first time ever that he's been doing this. He may run out, but right now he still has plenty uh, in three inch 12 gauge in Remington Express. I don't know, it's usually in the uh, Black Cloud Federal as well and he's got plenty of three inch 20 gauge he wanted me to let you guys know he still had plenty of the three inch remington nitro 20 gauge as well okay that being said and this is the actual round that we fired down at the range it'll be the second time i've loaded this round um that tells you that these uh that these loads are doing well pressures are excellent and we can uh load them two and three times Federal 209A primer. My Lee tabletop powder dispenser right here is throwing 28.5 grains of a long shot. Twenty eight and a half grains a long shot. And we need a ballistic products, white lightning. These things are tough as cobs. I'm gonna do a um. I promise you guys I'm gonna do a head-to-head -head 
with the white lightning when I finally got them I finally got them I finally got my hands on them. now this is a TPS wad you guys that have fired the TPS wad you know how well they perform especially at extended ranges the white lightning is just so dang tough it's made from a real real tough polymer just like the uh, the precision RW123 their 123 red wad I told you guys I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison that's for the next time today we're working to find what's going to work very well out of Brent's A5 and today that means a white lightning wide I will explain more later the uh, a little prelim I cannot get any shot bigger than 31 caliber in the uh, RW123 red precision wide. I can get up to 32 cal in the white lightning. Why? Because the, there is a little bit more room inside the white lightning wide. I'm going to show you an overlay of a picture that I took of them here. The pedals on that RW123 wide from precision are, that thing is hardy. That thing is a hardy, hardy wide. And it's thick and it's tough. This one is not as thick, but it is tough, extremely. Tough. and I'm going to show you some some of the aftermath whenever we get done with the shooting here install this TPS white lightning I've got some 20 gauge actually these are 20 these are thin these are 20 gauge 45 thousandths overshot cards here and I push this in the bottom of these wads these wads are not as dipped as the traditional TPS they're a little bit flatter I don't need as thick of a wad I want to keep as much room in this wad as I can 45 thousandths um, 20 gauge overshot or undershot card is what this is and we just I just take my my marker rammer here push it all in there together give it a good push till the resistance stops and you, then we got a real nice flat surface down in the bottom of this wide we need 14 pellets of 32 cal sing along it's just my hard cast powder coated 32 cal out of Marty's mold. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. They stack in there by twos, beautiful and symmetrical, right to the top of the wad. Is what we want. All of these pellets are encased in this full length wad. We're going to cover this in Ballistic Products Original. That's the buffer in the, in the blue can. The 4.0 dipper is perfect for me. All right, can y'all see the old 600? Here, yeah, this. There we go. So that it ain't, it ain't popping so loud on you guys. All right, and you see me leaning, huffing, and puffing, and grunting, and all that is because I'm in here all funky. I got three cameras set up here around all this gear so you guys can see what's going on. And it puts me in here funky. All right. And this... I can use the guide to finish it, but you can eyeball it with well, this one here. It did good enough without having to finish it with the guide tool. I'm gonna put a little miracle nail on this thing. There, let me let me bring y'all back into the kitchen here. Oh, right, there we, hey, there he is. I'm gonna put some of this miracle nail on here, and it seals all the cracks and crevices and keeps that buffer in there. The uh, very first shot, I wanted to do a baseline. He was shooting the uh, Remington Express number four buck. Well, I say that I know he was shooting that as well, maybe as other rounds, but that's all I had. Yeah, you guys know there's an ammo shortage going on right now, and if you can find buckshot, you better get it, whatever it is. But um, I don't have access to any new um, buckshot ammunition that I don't have put up somewhere. So um, anyway, we use the Remington Express 41 pellet as a base with his old Carlson 700 constriction choke that he had, non-ported choke that he had in there. 
and uh, before we get to the range uh, I'm gonna show you guys just how leaded up that choke was that was in Brent's shotgun it was so leaded up it took me 15 20 minutes of steady scrubbing to get the leading out of that choke I'm gonna show you what I uh, how I ha had to deal with that and we're gonna head on down to the range show you the prelim the base shot and then this was the first shot using one of the kicks uh, extra full buck kicker choke y'all stand by I use the Barnes CR-10 with the anti-lead and then the shotgun and the rifle because it works so good in the rifles. I've got a lot of this stuff. I've had it for a lot of years. I've probably had it on hand for 10 years and it works. So I just keep using it. It works real good at uh, getting the lead fouling out of anything. Okay, boys, to get our baseline, this is what Brent has been shooting, is the uh, number four buck, 41 pellet. All right, ready? Here we go. You folks can tell at 55 yards, that's, uh, that's not bad with number four buck, but Brent said he was over it. He was over the number four buck thing. These are small pellets. They really are. And uh, so let's see how many he put in here. I'll just start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 is what I get. There's one on the right side. 28. Yep, Rachel can <clears> see <throat> it. 28 of the factory uh, <clears throat> number four buck. He wants to use as big a pellets as we can make his gun work, as we can make work in his gun. And he wants this pattern as tight as we can get it at between 50 and 60 yards. So this is the baseline we're starting with. Uh, I think I'm gonna, we're gonna start with a 32 caliber 14 pellet extended range reload and start working our way down from there. Y'all stand by. Okay folks, now we're going to install the kicks. Buck kicker, extra full, 685 constriction. And we're gonna shoot once fired Remington Express Hull Federal 209A primer installed. 28 and a half grains of long shot. The TPS White Lightning wad, and we've got 14 pellets of my powder coated 32 cal single alt in here stacked by twos covered in Ballistic Products Original Buffer. We have a 20 gauge nitro card as an undershot card in the wad here, but I demonstrated that at the table for you folks. All right, let's see how this load shoots out of his Browning A5. Oh. Here we go. Dang, my glasses are getting foggy. 1366. Okay. Well, look at that, folks. And that's a uh, that's 32 caliber. Actually, it's like my my 32 cal or 32.5, 325 cal. Uh, that uh, boy, I called out a winner right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, tw
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of fourteen. And we got one, two, three, four, five right there in the center of the paper, 32 cow pellets. Just shy of 60 yards. Uh, that's impressive. All right, let's check the 31 cow, see how it works. Now we're rolling. And in the, the next shot that we checked is the identical same data, same load, only, only, only difference is we used 16 pellets of 31 cow single alt instead of the 14 pellets of the 32 cow. Let's head on back down to the range and show you how that one worked out. Okay, folks, basically same data with the white line and wide, only we've got 16 31 caliber powder coated single alt here in this round. This is my go-to load right here in my belt that my Stover likes so much. You shoot them too. It's the one you killed that big eight point opening day two years ago with was that 16 pellet load right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another Wow, good yeah. That's awesome. It really is. Let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of sixteen. And we got one, two, three, four, thirty-one cow right here under the bull. If this was a deer or hog. Anywhere in here, most all of these pellets would be in the animal. Or did I miss that one? I think I might have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, twelve of sixteen. Thirty-one cow. And we'll go back to the standard full and take the extra full out. Sometimes going from the tighter choke to the more open choke tightens these patterns up. So we'll see what happens there. That's awesome, ain't it? Um, now, the next round, uh, we're using a brand new 3-inch Chidite Clear from Ballistic Products. Okay, boys, in the next load, we're using a brand new Chidite Primed Hull from Ballistic Products. They had some in stock for a while. You just got to keep an eye out, and whenever they had them in stock, I grabbed them. Uh, I ended up getting about half what I wanted. I think what I ordered uh, by the time after I order them, they they go out of stock anyway. I just kept trying till I finally got my hands on a few bags. Thank God. But uh, but they're having a hard time keeping stock. We're gonna need 31 and a half grains of IMR blue for this load. 31 and a half grains of Alliant Blue Dot will work equally well. But today we've got blue in the machine. Go 315 to get past our decimal, enter it into our target weight, and dispense. New Chidite holes are tough. These are some tough, tough holes. And they work great loading buckshot. All right. 31 and a half grains of IMR blue or Alliant blue dot. All right. And let me see, said the blind man. Our TPS white lightning wad. And like I said, I'm using a 45 thousandths 20 gauge overshot card to put in the bottom of the wad and make it just as flat as I can make it. All right, we got 18 pellets of number one. We were limited on time. Weather was forecast to get bad. And I wanted to check this 18 pellet 
number one with uh, with the standard full choke, but we ran out of time, um, and so didn't get to check that. That that was unfortunate. I expect it would have done pretty good. It did decent out of the extra full choke, uh, but I imagine it would have done better out of the standard full. But this is some sound data here, boys. This is a this is a killer right here. 18 pellets of number ones stacked in here by twos. 18 number ones fills up the uh, the wad. Boys, I did not, I have not got my new mold from Marty yet and my, my 285 cal, and uh, and I had used up all of the 29 caliber that uh, that Roger had sent me. So unfortunately, I did not have any left to test here with uh, with Brent's shotgun. But I suspect it would have done extremely well. Let's cover this in original buffer. We get a clear overshot card, clear segmented overshot card. We're going to roll crimp this one, boys. Ballistic Products du uh, double roller, 12 gauge roll crimp tool. Take a little petroleum jelly, and I always put a little film in there before I ever start. Professional looking job every single time. It's beautiful. All right, let's head back to the range. Okay, folks, brand new Chidite Hull primed 31 and a half grains of IMR blue. We've got 18 30 cal number ones stacked in here by twos. Beautiful roll crimp in the TPS White Lightning wide from Ballistic Products, all covered in Ballistic Products Original. Buffer. Let's see how the number ones do. Uh, A5. The newer A5 model. He's had it a while now, but it's the yeah, but it is the new A5 model. All right, here we go. Eleven thirty-two. That's a, that's a good pattern, but there's 18 30 cal pellets. That's still a great pattern where the other ones went. It looks like it may have thrown them a little bit right. Yes, but like can. I said, I'm going to put the more open choke in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven, 11. eight, nine, ten. There's 11. Of 18. One over there on the right side and above the white pig. 11. Yeah. 11 of 18. And we got one, two, three, four, five, right there in the center of the paper. Like I said, we're gonna take the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the standard full back in there. All of these are gonna work, what would work well for him, actually. Well, I'm gonna put a little more open choke in it and we'll see how that works out. Okay, boys. We're still with the new Chidai Prime Paul here. The next round that we tried was the 14 pellet, 32 cal in the uh, Nuchidite and for that we're going to need 32 grains of IMR blue or 32 grains of Alliant blue dot but so we've got to get the get the machine set up here get the back council button hold it down wipes it out dump that charge back into the hopper and 32 and 0 to get past the decimal here, enter. Target weight is now entered and dispensed. This is the Gualandi Super G Mini. I think it's the official name that Gualandi gives this wad. That's what it is called if you have to get it at precision. And uh, it's called the Super, the Super Short. At, uh, at Ballistic Products. This is rapidly becoming one of my best performing wads. It's a um, it's a carbine version 
get down where I can get a hold of my MG42. It is the carbine version of the MG42. They're the identical same watch, same power piston only. You see here that the cup, the the pedals are short on the uh, on the Super Mini. It is an MG42 wide with shorter pedals, which helps out if you've got a bigger payload. All right. Hornady says we're done. Thirty-two grains of IMR blue is what I'm using today, but thirty-two of Alliant blue dot works equally well. You're going to notice that your your velocities are going to be higher with the IMR blue, slightly higher with the IMR blue than the Alliant blue dot. At least in my experience, that's what it is. Okay. Super G Mini. That's why I like these clear holes. You see everything the same. 32 cal. My 32 cal powder coated hard cast out of Marty's molds. Stack 14 in here by two. Nine, they fall right in. 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And they fall in there absolutely beautiful and symmetrical. We're going to cover all of it in Ballistic Products Original. Well, you can use a segmented overshot card or you can use your, your bingo marker, your transparent bingo markers that you get from eBay. It's three quarter inch, so transparent. I think this one might be purple. But set it down here. Just like that. Alrighty. Y'all watch this. Alright guys, we're going to put in the standard full, which is uh, 695 constriction. And uh, going to go back to the 32 cal. Brand new Chidite primed hull. We've got 32 of IMR blue in here, 32 grains of IMR blue. We've got 14 pellets of powder coated 32 cal single odd. And we've got the Gualandi Super G Mini wad in here. A little bit more room in this wad. Covered in Ballistic Products original buffer and a very beautiful roll crimp. Stand by. All right, 32 cal in the standard full configuration. Butt kicker choke. And this one has the Super G Mini, a little bit different wad. But I showed that to you guys at the bench. All right, here we go. Ten eighty-two. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. I just pulled it a little bit high. Great gosh, what a pattern. You're rolling, baby? Mm -hmm. That's going to be me looking over that hump on that A5. And like I said, my glasses are fogged up. I pretty much, I'm sure I pulled this high. Look at all that. Look at this wad right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 32 cal right there, right above the bull. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, a 14, and I pulled it high. See, we put a, the, the more, a little more open choke, and it immediately, as compared to the first shot, 
it tightened it right up. And this is what a, a wad gives you a little bit more spread. Now that has potential to beat the band there, boys. Um, it has been performing like that out of just about everything that I shoot it out of, uh, including my shotguns and all that. We haven't really gone any, into any in-depth review of these wads yet because we've still been testing them. We've been shooting them most of the summer. But now the season's going to be here in a week. A week. And uh, there's going to be a lot of field testing going on now, boys, because there just ain't no ammo available. Uh, so if you want to have buckshot, you're just going to have to make it. That's all there is to it. And no, boys, I can't sell my reloads. Uh, I can't do it. I'm limited on my supplies, too. And uh, and if I, uh, if I sold one buckshot to everybody that asked me about it in a week, I'd be uh, completely out of supplies and out of business. But uh, but no, I, I can't sell my reload my reloads, boys. So let's uh, we need a new once again new chidite primed hull, twenty eight and a half grains, a long shot out of the Lee desktop powder measure. I love these things. If you heard me say it enough, I love these things. White Lightning, TPS wad, and today I'm using 45 thousandths overshot 20 gauge card. Long shot has plenty of pop and it does not take up as much room in the hull as the blue powders do or the big flake powders do. Alrighty, we need. Uh, 16 pellets of 31 cal. And yes, that super mini works outstanding with the 31 cal as well. We need to stack 16 in here by two. You just drop them in there. 15, 16, and they find their own way cover in the uh, BP original clear segmented overshot card I haven't had one fail yet uh, when I'm roll crimping. Not one time. I just go by feel. That does an absolutely beautiful professional job every single time, boys. Been tickled with these tools. Let's go shoot this thing. Okay, folks. Brand new Chidite primed hull. We're back to the uh, 31 cal powder coated single lot 16 pellet 28 and a half grains long shot all of it is covered in uh, ballistic products original in the TPS white lightning Y from ballistic products roll crimp segmented overshot card we're shooting this this is out of the standard full choke see how I shot high big time on the last one. Okay, here we go. Thirteen forty six. Well, what do you think of that fellas? We uh put in the, the standard pole is out patterning the extra pole. Now mind you the Chuck and the boys over at Kicks Chokes designed these chokes to shoot factory type loads. Now, you know, Wade's reloads are a little unconventional at times. But, uh, so that's why you check to see what it likes. But, uh, holy macro what a pattern. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of 16. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here across the center of the paper. 5 that I can touch with my hand right there over the bowl. Brent, I just keep digging your grave deeper and deeper, brother. Okay. Let's, um, I got a, I got a number three buck. Let's see how it's throwing those smaller pellets out of the standard foil, and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, boys, last one, last one. Um, I don't like, personally, I don't like going smaller than number three buck. But, uh, but 25 caliber um, with me out of Marty's molds is like 25, 255. And then I powder coat them on top of that. And so I get 32 pellets and a three inch magnum load, a heavy hitting load of number three buck. And that's about as small as I like to go uh, reloading, uh, or especially reloading for myself. But I told Brent that we wanted, that, that does so good out of David Stokes' Stoger that, uh, and out of my Stoger. That I wanted to try it out of his browning with this setup just to see how it worked out and it was impressive how it worked out and this is how we put it together we need uh, 31 and a half grains of IMR blue or you guys getting it or a Alliant blue dot you get up too much over 33 grains in my experience because you're not go you're not finding a whole lot of data out there on the IMR blue when you're getting up over 33 grains, now you got to start paying attention to it because the IMR blue is a little denser and it weighs a little more than the Alliant blue dot. The powders were designed to mirror each other in volume. Uh, volume means not weight, but like charge bar bushings, dipper full, that's volume. Dipper full, that's volume. This is a 2.2. Uh, CC Dipper from Lee. I say I scooped up uh, Alliant Blue Dot. This is going to be around 26 grains of Alliant Blue Dot. I scoop up the same measure of IMR Blue and it's going to weigh about 27 grains. Same volume, but it's heavier. See what I'm talking? See, uh, see where I'm going with this, boys? And as long as we're down under 33 grains, in my experience, the weight doesn't matter with the blue powders. You get up over, you're getting up around three and a half inch or real hot three inch loads, 34 grains, 35 grains. Now you're going to have to watch it. If you're using 35 grains of Alliant Blue Dot, you don't want to be using but about 34 grains of IMR Blue. See what I'm saying? Okay, let's get this number three book put together. Okay, we need 31 and a half grains of IMR Blue. So let's get this programmed in. Three one five to get past our decimal here 31 and a half enter it target weight is entered and now dispense it it is extremely satisfying to watch plans come together but that browning a5 is such a high quality shotgun that you expect outstanding performance uh, out of a shotgun that, that can cost you fifteen hundred or more dollars. Alrighty, thirty one and a half grains of IMR blue, thirty one and a half of Alliant Blue Dot will work equally well. I have and do use up to thirty two grains of these powders in this very load. But this, the, uh, the, the lighter charge, really held together well out of uh, Brent's A5. TPS White Lightning. 45 thousandths 20 gauge overshot card. Eighth inch would probably work just as well. All right. Let me get our number three book. I have been recovering a lot of breaking down a lot of old rounds, folks. That's why you see all kind of multiple colors in here with the with the number three buck that I've recovered out of old rounds. Stack them in here by four. Hopefully the light at the angle I got there, you can see them. Stack them in there by fours.
32 right to the top of the wad which is what we're after and this is 1.7 ounces of lead payload weight 1.7 ounces all right you won't need as much buffer with these smaller pellets because the smaller pellets take up most of the room most of the volume in the wide so it won't take near as much of the buffer to get them in here around the small pellets a clear overshot card Absolutely beautiful every time. That's a heavy hitter right there, boys. Let's go shoot it. Okay. Number three buck is about as small as I go in my belt, boys. That's 30. Uh, that's 25 caliber. Now, mine, mind you, out of uh, out of Marty's mold is running me about 255 caliber and then I put a, a layer of powder coat on it so it's going to hang in a 256 257 caliber we've got 32 pellets of 25 caliber powder coated in this three inch in this uh, TPS white lightning wide 31 and a half grains of IMR blue all covered in ballistic products original and let's see how it does with these 25 cal pellets Here we go. Yeah, man, I get, it, my eyes are getting so fu fuzzy, the humidity is so high, my glasses are fogged up. Trying to focus on this, this site. Here we go. 1109. I may have pulled out a little bit left. Like I said, look at my, can you, my glasses are all fogged up. Well, holy cow, I must have, uh, I didn't pull it left, boys, I pulled it low. There's two, that's three right there, okay. All right, let's see what we got into paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 of 32. If I counted it right, one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 of 32, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there that I can cover with my hand in the center of the paper with another imagine if this is deer right here back down to belly right there all of these 25 caliber pellets here two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen forty fifteen sixteen seventeen pellets would have been in the animal that's even at 25 caliber seventeen pellets that concentrated hitting the animal that animal is done right here Okay, Brent, you see what we got, buddy? Looks like it worked out well. We know what to, we know what to put together. So, that A5, that is a nice weeping, folks. First time I've ever shot a new one. All right, hope y'all enjoyed it. Now that was a heck of a fun ride, wasn't it? Uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to Kicks Chokes for sending me the chokes to uh, to try here in Brent's A5. Big shout out to Ballistic Products. They help me a lot here at this channel, folks. Um, I don't, I'll put it this way, I don't have to buy everything. They, uh, they do send me some product to try every once in a while, and I do appreciate it. 
Um, we, uh, we got a lot more stuff that we're working on, but we are running out of time. The, uh, the season's gonna be here. That doesn't mean we're gonna stop R&D once the season gets here, but we sure do get busy when the season gets here. Hope y'all enjoyed the video, folks, with the, uh, with the A5 pattern testing and dialing it in to where Brent has absolutely no excuse this year whatsoever. We'll see y'all on the next one. Bye-bye.